Hi, I'm Keon Shamsku. I'm a biochemistry major and a math minor, and I'm from Los Gatos, California, which is a small suburb outside of San Jose. The full title to my project is the oxidative allylation of 1,3-dicarbonyls via photoredox catalysis. So photoredox catalysis is a long title for this methodology that we were working on, which is the idea of using light to induce a chemical reaction, particularly a redox reaction, which is a type of chemical modification or chemical transformation. A transformation is some change in a chemical structure when you let it proceed through a reaction. In terms of applications of my research, in organic chemistry, there's methods and there's synthesis. A big portion of what I do is methods, and that's what our, our findings will eventually be published as. In terms of methods, we're kind of building the tools that a construction worker would use to build a house. If a total synthesis project, which is building a big chemical of interest, requires these different tools to carry out each portion of the procedure, we kind of want to build the most effective tools at each portion. So this idea of photoredox catalysis is circumventing or getting past the barriers which can be present in a lot of transformations that we know can happen, but are they safe and are they hazardous? That's the question that we're trying to solve. Through the methodology, which is a technique that we use of photoredox catalysis, it's a kind of a convoluted name for this idea of shining big bright lights into reaction vessels. And in those vessels, we have compounds known as photocatalysts. And these compounds are able to take the light and turn it into chemical energy. And this is a really powerful capability because you're able to access reactions that would otherwise not be able to happen. You would be able to do this, but to do so you would have to use large amounts of hazardous chemicals such as strong base or strong acid or even having to use a lot of heat, which can be both hazardous and environmentally bad because all those reagents that you end up using have to go into waste and then that, those have to be disposed. Using this idea of being able to harness visible light and using that as chemical energy can circumvent a lot of these barriers and access a lot of transformations that can be very powerful. So in terms of drug pharmacology or applications in the industry, if you say somebody wanted to make a really big compound that they know is bioactively accessible, but you can only get it in small amounts by getting it from, I don't know, a tree that you found it from. If you were able to make it in a lab, then you could provide this chemical in much greater yields and quantities by simply just making it in a, in a fume hood. When I first began on this project, I hopped into this project with the final phases of optimization, which is we know the conditions that we need to apply for this reaction to actually occur. Now we're trying to see what different substrates or just starting compounds can we actually apply this methodology to a photoredox catalysis. It was my job to basically build these starting materials and then put them through this transformation and see how effective and how well can our transformation be applied to different compounds. And at the end of it, we found a very wide and diverse substrate scope or starting material scope to apply this transformation to. And it ended up working out really well. And so we just recently published a paper using this methodology on three separate transformations all in the same vein using the same methodology. Professor Cannon was a great mentor and he was an awesome like, research advisor because coming into the lab, I didn't know how to do anything in terms of organic chemistry. And I was mentored by seniors as well, but working with Professor Cannon was a big part of it also because I would meet with him almost every other week and figure out like how my progress is going in terms of not only my research progress, but also how I'm doing as a scientist. And a big part of doing research at Oxy, in my opinion, is learning how to build that foundation of becoming a good scientist. Because later on, you'll use those ideas and the techniques you learn here and apply them in a bigger field or a bigger institution where you'll be a step ahead because you know how to do everything. What drew me to Oxy was that I was able to explore a lot of different academic fields while also staying invested in the sciences because I knew that I was interested in that coming to college. And that's a really good opportunity because it kind of diversified the way in which I spent my academic career. 
I didn't want to just do all science classes for every single class every semester because I would kind of fall out of practice in terms of, oh, can I understand how to read and find pleasure in learning about philosophy or English or any other field that is really important because it's not just a science. Being a science scholar has impacted my research career in a pretty big way as it's allowed me to kind of be more invested into a lot of the things that I do. This opportunity of being a science scholar has allowed me to go to conferences and kind of diversify my experience as a researcher and build upon that foundation in a, in a very great way.